in part two, we'll be looking at the muscles of the leg. All right, so that would be the muscles below the knee. In part one, we had taken a look at the muscles above the knee. We divide the leg into three compartments. The front of the leg has uh, three muscles that we're going to look at. There's actually four, but we're going to look at three called the anterior compartment. Then we'll take a look at two muscles in the lateral compartment, and then we'll finish up with seven in the posterior compartment. There is no medial compartment. So when we look at the anterior leg, you know, we know it's anterior because again, you can see the foot down over here. You can see the patella right kind of in this area here. The first muscle that runs right just lateral to the tibia, right along the tibia. It actually attaches to the entire tibia and then it comes down over here towards the first metatarsal. This is called the tibialis anterior. And when you contract this muscle, this is the muscle that brings our foot up. Like if you were driving and you took your foot off the gas pedal, um, that would be called dorsiflexion. If you've ever had a shin splint or you know someone that's had a shin splint, this is one of the main muscles that results in a shin splint, a very painful condition. Just lateral to the tibialis anterior, so right next to it, this is the belly of the extensor digitorum longus. And if you notice, the tendons all go down to the four toes, right? So toe two, three, four, and five. And when this muscle contracts, it's going to extend those four toes, hence the name extensor digitorum. This muscle will also assist the tibialis anterior in dorsiflexion. But if you just kind of remember the name, you'll know the action automatically extends the digits, right? Extends the toes. The next muscle, we see the tendon here, runs right over the top of the big toe. This is called the extensor hallucis. If you remember from our first lab, this is the hallux, which would be the big toe. If you follow the tendon up, you would see that we can follow it right here, but you lose the tendon because the belly of the muscle is between these two other muscles. So from this dissection here, that's all we see. If we flip over here, we can remove this extensor uh, digitorum muscle. We can remove that and then take that muscle off, turn it around, and then right over here, this would be the extensor hallucis muscle. All right, so the only way you can see the belly of the muscle is if you take the extensor digitorum off, remove it like I did here, and then turn it around, and that would be the extensor hallucis. Otherwise, if the extensor dig is in place, all you see is the tendon over here of the, of the great toe. The name tells you what it does, right? It extends the great toe. The lateral leg has two muscles. These are known as the fibularis longus and the fibularis brevis. Um, some people do call it the peroneus muscles. You can have the peroneus longus, the peroneus brevis. Fibularis is a little bit easier because it tells you that these muscles run right along the fibula, which is the, the lateral leg bone. So let's do the fibularis longus first. The belly of the muscle is right where the head of the fibula is. So all of this is the fibularis longus, but then the tendon here is a long, thin tendon. It goes down and it goes around the lateral malleolus over towards the fifth digit this way, towards the pinky toe, right? Towards the, the fifth digit. So all of this here, fibularis longus. Now, not quite as tall, but a little bit deeper and broader, this muscle right here, and we can catch a little bit on this side too. This is the fibularis brevis. So the tendon of the fibularis longus is actually superficial to the muscle below it, the fibularis brevis. Both of these muscles uh, run together and insert together, so they do the same thing. They are going to evert the foot. And if you just took your feet and flared your soles out, that would be eversion. The final compartment are the muscles on the posterior leg. So we have seven muscles. Three of them I like to do together because they all form the Achilles tendon. Here's the Achilles tendon down over here. Some people call it the calcaneal tendon going right down to the 
the heel of the foot. The first muscle, really big, you can't miss it, has two heads to it. This is called the gastrocnemius. Okay, so this big muscle right here, it's got two parts, the gastrocnemius is going to help form this Achilles tendon. And then the muscle just deep to it, we could see a little bit over here. And if we follow it up there, and then on this side, you can see it a little bit more. This is going to be called the soleus. So that muscle is deep to the gastrocnemius. If we pop the gastrocnemius off, which I did here, we can actually see the whole soleus laying underneath the gastrocnemius. All right, so this whole muscle right here is the soleus. And then again, under, underneath the gastrocnemius. That's the soleus, gastrocnemius. The third muscle that helps to form the Achilles tendon, we have to separate the two bellies of the gastrocnemius. So here's one belly here, here's the other belly here, and we see this thin tendon right here. This is the tendon of the plantaris muscle. Here's the actual belly of the muscle as it's going between the two heads of the gastrocnemius and it's heading up to the femur. So this is an actually easy muscle to identify because it has a thin strap of a tendon right between it and then here's the belly of the muscle but again the only way you can see the whole thing is if you took this gastrocnemius and separated it from this side right here so the gastrocnemius just to come back back for a second to the, to the original picture we could actually see up here the plantaris right there so the gastrocnemius the plantaris and the soleus all work together to plantar flex the foot, right? So you're driving your car and you point your toes down, right? To put your foot on the gas pedal, or if you stand on your toes, right? You stand like your tippy toes, so to speak. That would be contracting your gastroc soleus and plantaris. So now we remove the gastroc, the soleus, and plantaris to see the deeper part of the leg. The next muscle on our list is the popliteus. So if you remember from our first lab, pop, the popliteal was the back of the knee. So this oblique muscle here running right behind the knee, this is the popliteus. This muscle functions to unlock the knee. If we've kind of locked our knee in straight, uh, this ha actually helps to kind of unlock it so that we continue to move or continue to walk. That would be the popliteus in line with the big toe, this is medial, this is going to be the flexor digitorum longus. Right, you would think since it's in line with the big toe, it would move the big toe, but it doesn't. It actually crosses over. And then over here in line with the four digits, this is the flexor hallucis longus. So again, you would think it would move the four digits, but these two muscles cross. So you have to kind of remember that they crisscross. The flexor digitorum is going to curl the four toes the flexor halysis is going to curl the big toe. All right, so say you were taking a shower and you drop the washcloth and you're too lazy to bend down and pick it up, you could grasp it with your toes. You would be contracting your flexor dig and your flexor halysis and that would kind of grab the, the washcloth and you could bring it up that way. The last muscle out of this group is the deepest one. You'll find it right between the flexor dig and the flexor hal. This muscle, all in here, all of this, this is called the tibialis posterior. So this is on the posterior side of the tibia. And this muscle uh, will also do some plantar flexion, and it will invert the foot, will actually turn the sole of the foot in.